Hello and welcome to this great sister to sister. Listen to this question, Corey. Have you ever had to have a breakup with a friend and what did it teach you? I'll never break up with you, Kathy. Well, good. And here's another question. Is the devil trying to trick us? I think so. Stay tuned, find out what the sisters think. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. I am so glad that you've joined this show today. This is really gonna be a great show, good questions. And you're gonna hear from all five of us because we are opinionated women of God. We really are, but you're gonna find out a little bit more because wait till you hear this question. You, you might wonder this yourself. Someone wrote, how can I distinguish the voice of God versus the voice in my own head. So how do I know if the devil is trying to trick me into something against God? So good, hearing God, Corey. Well, if it's against God, it's not of God. So you can That's know good. that for sure, that if something is against the scripture, against what God has called us to do, or mm -hmm. then it's, it, that's never of God. He's never gonna call us to sin. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's really important that we remember, the Bible reminds us that we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, from Ephesians 6, 12, mm. we, but against principalities, That's against right. powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual weakness and wickedness in high places. That's right. The devil is real and hell is real. And I think that a lot of times we try to sugarcoat it and not that you know, we should be talking about this all the time, but we need to be reminded that the devil is real and evil spirits exist. And so I think people need to guard against that. I agree. Yeah. What do you have? Anybody have a scripture? Well, I'm going to use a scripture Amy used a couple of shows ago, uh, 1 John chapter 2, meaning that most sin ends in these three categories, lust of the eyes, mm -hmm. lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as Corey was saying, God uh, exalts his word above his name. He's not going to go against his word, but you have to look at is what you're pursuing is it lust of the eyes, mm, lust of good, the flesh, or the pride of life? And mm. take that as a measuring for, it could be something good, it could be something, quote, mm, godly. Yeah, yeah. But as Flo said in another segment, is it God's purposes in your life or are you just mm. doing it to esteem yourself? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Very to good. me, you've really got to unpack and study how to be led by the Spirit of God. When you're distinguishing between His voice and your voice, you're talking about these voices coming at your mind and these thoughts. You know, you're listening to your heart, you're listening to your spirit man, you're listening to God's voice, you're trying to determine and decipher. But one thing is for sure that his voice brings great peace. His direction brings great peace. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a hard thing you have to do, a big thing, you know, uh, we're, we're in the middle of a, of a big uh, transaction right now. And when I go to the spirit, I feel so much peace. I feel like I'm swimming in rivers of peace. Mm -hmm. When I start thinking about it in my head, my head goes crazy. What, what are you doing? Right. Stop this right now. This is insane. I go, I go, listen to the still small voice and there's peace. And, and that, it, there's like a red light, yellow light, proceed with caution or green, go. And there's rivers of peace and still waters for you. And you have to be quiet to hear yes, the, the voice. That's the problem. We're putting everybody else's words in. We're reading this devotional. We're listening to this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, but what Amy is saying, it's God in you, in your heart. Mm -hmm. What do you have, Flip? You know, that's the devil's job. Which thing? Deception. Is to, to trick, yeah. to mm -hmm. operate in right. deception. Mm -hmm. right. As far as hearing the voice of God, it, this took me back to being young in the Lord and I can remember being, it was God speaking to me and me not being able to discern it. And I can remember the fear that went with it. And it wasn't till later that I began to recognize mm -hmm. even the peace mm -hmm. of God as, as you used as an example. But I can remember the anxiousness 
uh, of it all mm -hmm. and um, just not wanting to do the wrong thing. Is this really the, the will of God? Right. Not knowing the word well enough, um, which brought me back to, as the word says, to study to show yourself yeah, approved so and to get so into good. scriptures about whatever it is that, yeah. uh, that's bothering you. you. Oh, that's yeah. so good. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen with your heart, not mm -hmm. this. Okay, so here's a good one. If there is an all-knowing God, and there is, he knows who will ultimately reject him. Why does God create people who he knows will end up in hell? Hmm. All right, well, let's first get this straight. Yeah. Matthew 25 says, hell was created for Satan and the angels that rebelled against That's God. Right. Right. That's right. Right. Hell was not created for, for man. That's right. right. Good. And in the Garden of Eden, there was the knowledge of good and evil, and there was the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And they did not choose life. Joshua says, choose life. They chose to be like God. Mm. They chose, you will be like God. You won't die. Go ahead and eat it. You'll be as smart as him. They wow. chose the knowledge of good and evil over the tree of life. So what does that mean? God gives us choices. Jesus said to right. Peter, who do you say I am? Are you going to leave me too like the other 70 mm -hmm. some disciples left me when I said you have to eat my body and drink my blood? And he didn't mean it. He meant it spiritually, right. but they weren't getting it spiritually. So God makes Cho there's choices that he permits in our life and then that is the outcome of judgment for sin if Christ's blood doesn't cover you and wow. your sin. Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, Anybody? there's God's sovereign will and then there's God's permissive will and I that's think right. that we get those confused sometimes. But the verse mm -hmm. that I just could not stop thinking about was from Peter when he says, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, some counsel this, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, right. but that all should come to repentance. That's right. That's right. So it, the Lord created us mm -hmm. for to, uh, for us to, to worship, worship him. him. Yes. Right. That was why we were created. Right. And he created the first man and woman perfect and they were in the perfect place. But he also isn't a puppet master. Mm -hmm. We're not marionettes where he is controlling That's what we right. do. Just like Roxy said, we have choices, but mm -hmm. he wants everyone to come to repentance. Wow, yeah. Right. What do you That's have, right. Amy? I think uh, this question too comes from a reformed doctrine of the church. Mm -hmm. Um, which is not always bad. I think every uh, doctrine has some great strengths and weaknesses. You know, to this point, not everybody has it, not every um, sector of Christianity has this viewpoint that why does God even create people if he right. knows they're going to end up in hell? It's that predestined uh, doctrine. So, what I would say is that we are born into a sinful world. We're born into sin. And, and sin was a problem. Sin separated us from God. Sin needed to be judged. And the judgment for sin was upon Jesus. Right. So we receive that or we don't receive that. We're not forced into it. We're not bullied into it. It is God's grace. It is his drawing. But, but one thing is for sure is that we go into all the world and we preach the gospel Amen. and we preach it to every man and every woman seeing that they are lost and that they need a savior and that there is an opportunity every second of every day for the lights to come on and for somebody to come and receive Christ and their life Amen. to be changed forever. And then they will not be destined to hell, but they will be with him forever. Amen. Like Roxy said, choices, choices. What do you have for yeah. this? Wow, I think that everybody answered it. great. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to move to the next question, which is my job to do. But I love, I love all of our philosophies and all of our different ideas, and I love it. But I love this question, too. Mm. Have you ever experienced a friendship breakup with a friend? And what did it teach you, Amy? Shoo! There's been many friendship break breakups, friendship makeups, friendship <laughs> repenting. Here's what I've learned is that 
not one person is guaranteed to be with you for your whole life, all of your life, and you're gonna be okay if that one person and you part ways, you're gonna live. Um, I, I, it made me realize a, big, a huge lesson I learned is you don't put all of your friendship eggs into one basket. Like one person cannot meet all of your friendship needs. And I think sometimes when you do that, you're giving them the wrong place in your life. There's some to go have fun with. There's some you call and you pray and you hit the ground and you cry out to God, but they're not the fun ones that go to the movies. Mm -hmm. There's ones you get together with as couples. There's ministry friends. There's many different friends and not one person will meet all that you need for your life. So that's what you learned. What about you, Corey? I mean, I have been through some painful friendship ending. I don't like to call it a breakup because I look at relationships, friendships specifically, as seasons. And I think mm -hmm. that the Lord brings people to us for seasons. So when I had younger kids, I had a circle of friends that it was just right. like moms with the same age right. kids. And we just don't have the same relationship now. And I, I am still so thankful for what that season brought me in that friendship. Now, I have also had friends that have betrayed me, and that is another mm, level, level, okay? Yes. And, you know, what that taught me was what true friendship looks like, how to be a real friend, and how not to be, to be a friend. friend. Yeah. Yes. So you did have a friend breakup. Yes. I love what you just shared, and um, if, I don't take notes often, but it, it was definitely <laughs> Uh, in there, you know, um, I like what you said about relationship versus friendship. I think, um, you know, I was working with some people and we, we were talking about uh, people use this term all the, oh, I know her, oh, I know him. Mm. And I said, knowing is a very intimate thing. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people, you really don't know them, you know of them. Mm -hmm. You might have had tea with them, I might have sat in a class with them, they might have even been my teacher for something. But we don't know each other, we don't know each other intimately. Friendships, I believe, are like Jonathan and David. Mm -hmm. They are purpose driven. Mm -hmm. They have been connected by God from the beginning of time before you guys even came on the scene. Mm -hmm. Relationship serves uh, a purpose in the sense of, as you have said, there are seasons, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what does the word say? There's a time and a season for yeah. everything, right? And learning how to be a friend is just that, you're learning. It is a process, it is a dying to self, whether you feel it covenant, like Jonathan and David, right, or right. you feel it contractually. Mm -hmm. um, I can learn from all of the above. Some of my takeaways from betrayal has been mm. operate in discernment. Don't be so quick mm -hmm. to jump on board with yeah. someone. Right. Um, are you equally yoked? We tend to mm, use right. that like, oh, he saved, I'm saved, she saved, we can go in business together. No, right. we can't. Right. Are we equal, do we have the same motive for what we're going into business so for? Right. Are we doing, you know, that's the that's part so about right. being equally yoked. How do we believe, you know? Um, so it, it is things like that that I think sometimes we very easily dismiss and we put people in places that God never intended for them to be. Everybody that comes in my life is not a friend. You said it well. Um, some people are meant to be for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Some are just for that season. They were to teach you something. But the way I handle the relationship, I always say kingdom culture is what? A culture of honor and protocol. And so if I treat everybody right, if I love everybody right, if I handle you right, I will reap the harvest of why God sowed you into my life. Right. Do you have a scripture on the friendship and the breakup? Um, well, I want to say this, that God spoke to me when somebody hurt me. Mm -hmm. He said, and I think if I wrote it down, as much, I think it's Romans 12, as much as it depends on you, be at peace, peace. Mm -hmm. with all men. So whatever the circumstance is, find a place of peace. I had to go to a person and actually, they hurt me, but I had to be the one to go to reconcile. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God is calling you yeah. to be that minister yeah. of reconciliation. Sometimes yeah. he's saying, stay away, yeah. it's fire. That's right, right, <laughs> right. Let it go. Right. 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 right, but I think, isn't there a scripture for this? 
You don't have a scripture for me? I just did. Oh, oh I'm Romans sorry. 12. Romans 12. As far as it oh, is okay, within right. you, be at peace. Okay, because I was thinking um, about that too and how friends build me up and how you girls know my heart. Thank you for being with us. We have more Sister to Sister. Welcome back to all my friends out there. <laughs> Glad you're with us. Um, good questions for you. Listen to this one. Should we let other, oh, this, I have to put my glasses. Should we let other people's perceptions of us influence our world all around us? Roxy. I'm gonna open the little world of Roxy's head. Okay, oh. come on. All right, to how to handle this, because we could go haywire with people's perceptions. Yeah. Sometimes their perceptions help us become a better person. Yeah. Sometimes they drag us down to miss God's purpose. Yes. But right. listen to this if you can, this is my kind of key. Another's perception of you exposes who they are. Come on. A perception of you exposes, exposes who, who they, they are. are. Mm -hmm. All right, tell so me. So if they're saying, oh, you know, you're mean or whatever, it's something in them that's bringing out what they oppose about you or jealous, whatever. Ooh. So let me give the example. Um, in the scripture, uh, Peter said, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah. And Jesus said, I want to know who right. you mm. think I am. That's right. And Peter says, you are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You are the Christ. So what was it exposing in Peter? Jesus didn't need to hear it. Right. Sometimes we don't That's need good. to hear someone's perception, but it exposes where they are in your life. That's and so if you can look at it that way, you're not going to be as offended when somebody says something that you know is an accurate or maybe a half truth right. that you could apply to your life, yeah. but it exposes something about them. Mm. So then that's a cautionary to everybody yes. out there. Yes. Watch how you perceive people and what you say about mm. them because it could be exposing who you are. Right. And mm. both yeah. of you are on the pulpit and in ministry. Mm -hmm. So what do people's perceptions mean to you? How, how does that affect you? You're laughing. I, you know what, I, for me, I think, I, I love what Roxy just mm -hmm. said. And so you just don't allow other people's perception to become your reality. Yeah. But I do think it having an influence can be helpful. As the, I love the analogy she just gave, you know, here they come, you know, well, some say you're Elijah, some say right. you're this. And he said, but who do you say I am? And that provoked them that provoked them to go get a deeper revelation. What, what do you feel? So that you don't just yeah. bite off and start chewing That's and digesting what somebody else had to say about you and it becomes your truth, That's you know? Yeah. So it, 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 just like when Jesus talked in parabolic form, I believe the fact that you had to figure it out kind of firebrands that revelation in your spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amy, I, you're laughing. Oh, no, go ahead. Amy, you were mm -hmm. laughing. Uh, well, I'm just thinking if, you know, if I were to let other people's perceptions of me influence my world, I mean, it would be a chaotic mess <laughs> about just, but my point is, is the right people should have the right influence in your life. There should be people that have influence and a voice in your life. If you don't have any sense of boundaries or corrections or right. any but wisdom speaking into your life, you're in big trouble. But I also thought about, you know, living for the audience of one, because if you're trying to live for other people's I told my son on yeah. the soccer field, you be dead to praise and dead to criticism. You get out there, you do what you know, you have fun, you play vigorous, play your heart out. What the coach does other is between them and the Lord, right? But Paul said, which is interesting, I become all things to all people so that I may win some. It, it is not good for Christians to just absolutely be clueless and not read the room. And they, it, they make Christianity look so goofy and weird. It's like, read the room. They don't want to talk to you. Don't go in their face. Jesus died on the cross. And you're just like, 
You have no relationship with them. They don't want to hear what you have to say right now. Like read the room. There's a sense of what Paul did. He read the room that he was in, the city that he was in, yeah, the place funny. that he was in, the people that he was with and spoke uh, the oracles of God there. Okay, that's good. Yes. And I know you have something for this. I mean, Perception. real quickly, I just think on the flip side, basing what you believe about people on perception is immature and childish. That's good. And as we grow and mature, we realize people are more than their outward appearance, right. than more that's, than what your perception right. of that's them right. is. When I was a little kid, I used to think if someone listened to rock music or swore, they weren't a Christian. Because I was, <laughs> I was, oh, I, was yeah. I mean, it's true. I used to think, oh, they're We're not a Christian. Trouble. They yeah. listen to bad music. But now that I am matured yeah. and an adult, Adult, I realized that that was incorrect thinking and that I need to get to know people. You talked about knowing mm -hmm. people and we talked about friends. So mm -hmm. we can't base our judgment of other people on perceptions. We need to get to know them. All right, so stop judging everybody. Stop judging <laughs> everybody. Listen to this question. Mm -hmm. Philippians says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but to the interest of others. So beautiful. But if I don't look out for myself, who will? She writes, and you say? That is looking out for yourself. Come on. When you yeah. invite the kingdom yeah. in, when you invite, when you are reminded of the very Ruha, the breath of God, that he breathed into you as he created you from the earth itself, then you are looking out for yourself because what I'm doing is trying to do my best to honor God. And I always say the higher you go, the lower you must go. So Ooh. when I look wow. at people and I think, as the scripture says, do nothing for selfish ambition or conceit. I ha even when I sit here at this table, mm -hmm. am I studying so I can give a better answer mm -hmm. than Roxy? Right. Or am I studying so that I, number one, I need to spend time in the word to grow in God. Right. It's not about whatever, anything in ministry should come from the overflow of my relationship with God. Yes. You, you, are you understanding what I'm yes. saying? And so I, I think when I, when I think of, okay, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Right. Yes, I want to, you say this all the time. Oh. It, you like the shows when we all, we're listening to one another. Right. You know, what that's doing is I'm giving honor, I'm showing respect. Oh, okay, that's Roxy's. Uh, okay, that's, that's Amy. Uh, that's, all right, I might not completely agree, but here's my perspective on it. Right. And the humility is understanding I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I don't have the revelation mm -hmm. to everything. I don't, and this God uses people. God uses people. How, when you, we, we said faith cometh by hearing, what is the hearing? Do you get up every morning and God talks to you for an hour and gives you a Bible study? Or do you turn on someone and listen to their podcast? Are you reading out of a book? How are you hearing? God uses people and, and, and every joint supplies. And so when I think about things like that, let each of you look not only to your own interests. I can't come on and, and because I wanna be the big personality or I wanna be, I have to do it because this is what God has assigned me to and I must submit, I must humble myself to the will, to the purpose, to the plan of God. And those that know their God will do great and mighty exploits. So knowing him is my greatest choice. Right, and so the, the question that the lady wrote was if I don't look out for myself, who will? And that was really articulate that's how she how, looks out for herself. She, but in a simplistic manner, I would say to you, you don't have to worry about looking out for yourself because God mm, will. That's good. Love you all so much. We'll be right back to wrap this up. That was good. What a great show we had today. And of course, we always end sister to sister with a scripture. And I love this one. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 from the NLT version. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And when I read this scripture, I immediately thought of my grandma and I think we have a picture here. This is my family. I'm sitting on my grandma's lap there as a little baby. Mm. 
And I prayed for my grandma every single day that she would get saved from the time that I was a young girl until her death. And right in the week that she died, she accepted the Lord as her savior. So the work you do is never in vain. And whatever you're called to, if it's being called to being on a Christian television show, or you're being called to lead worship, or maybe it's just baking cookies for someone, or praying and encouraging someone, do your work enthusiastically as we're called to in this verse because your work is not in vain. And we can be immovable in that work because we stand with Christ beside us. That's how we can be immovable and that we can affect the world for Christ. So do whatever you're called to. There's no job too big or too small to do the work of the Lord. Right, and I'll just, I'll just add too that your, your behavior during a trial, when you still can lift the Lord up, that too is the circumstances that the other will say, I want what she has. And we also end with, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a sister sharpen the other. Then I always add, you see, these girls make me a much better Kathy, and I mean it, and I'm grateful for you. We'll see you next time. We are the sisters.